So Jim O'Doherty has been ordered by the High Court to remove defamatory videos which are published on the internet. In these videos, O'Doherty makes some stunning and remarkable comments about Bowman Hospital and the Director of Nursing. She's been ordered to take down the videos pending the hearing of the action, the defamation case brought by Bowman Hospital and its Director of Nursing against O'Doherty. But pending the hearing of the full action under the Defamation Act 2009, Mr. Justice Allen directed O'Doherty to remove the videos immediately, pending, as I say, the full hearing. But the judge had no doubt that the videos are defamatory and had no doubt that O'Doherty will have no defence to the defamation proceedings as to the videos. Just to be clear about what she was claiming in these videos, as I say, it's remarkable stuff, but it included claiming that staff are being forced to take experimental COVID-19 injections, which she alleged have killed thousands of people. She also claimed in the videos that staff who did not take vaccines were harassed and demoted, described the hospital as a death camp and said it employed psychopaths and had committed crimes against humanity. By any rational objects, by any rational standards, any reasonable view of those statements would recognise that they are clearly defamatory. She further claimed that the hospital had denied life-saving treatment to patients and is administering lethal injections of COVID-19 vaccines. Justice Allen found that the statements were defamatory and that O'Doherty had no reasonable defence to that and he was making various orders, including injunctions, requiring O'Doherty to take the videos down. What Miss O'Doherty had said in her reporting about the hospital and Miss Murray, who was the Director of Nursing, was devoid of substance, devoid of substance. And he said that there was no prospect of her ever standing it up. He said and recognised that courts must be careful about freedom of speech and curtailing freedom of expression, of opinions, but they will intervene when it can be shown that statements have been made and are liable to be repeated, for which there is no reasonable defence, no reasonable basis. He agreed with authority that journalists have a duty to report and comment on matters in the public interest regardless of which side of the fence that you might be, in other words, even if it was reported, had a negative impact. And he further agreed that journalism or journalists have a role in holding powerful institutions to account. But he rejected her claim that the pursuit of the injunctions against her was tantamount to denying journalists the human right to freely report on matters of public importance. He refused the request that she be prevented from making any comment about Beaumont Hospital or the Director of Nursing, he said that would go much too far. The orders are to remain in place pending the outcome of the full hearing of the plaintiff's defamation action against O'Doherty. Miss O'Doherty said she would not be silenced. She submitted the action was spurious, outrageous, a waste of public money. But Mr Justice Allen said that the videos that the action was not about O'Doherty's fringe views on vaccines or on COVID-19. She was entitled to her own opinion, whether there's an emergency or not. But what she had said in the videos was that the plaintiffs, well knowing that there's no COVID-19 crisis, had engaged in practices such as restricting life-saving medical treatment and had administered COVID-19 vaccines to staff without consent. It was his firm view. She has no reasonable prospect of establishing the truth of what she has said about the plaintiffs. 
To do so, she'd have to prove that the plaintiffs secretly agree with her views, that there's no COVID-19 crisis, and that hospital staff should be given vitamins and zinc instead of vaccine injections. The judge was satisfied this was not a defence that is reasonably likely to succeed. And he concluded liability for the cost of the injunction application should be decided when final orders regarding costs are being made after the full hearing. Again, this is another instance of Gemma Doherty going to the High Court, or being brought to the High Court rather, on this occasion. It will be interesting to see how the costs are awarded after the full hearing, but costs normally follow the event, so the likelihood is that if Beaumont Hospital and the Director of Nursing are successful in their action, and let's face it, the likelihood is that they will be successful. The likelihood then is that costs will follow the event and that costs will be awarded against Order Hurty. The question then of implementing that cost order will arise. Um, that's a matter for Beaumont Hospital and the Director of Nursing when the case is decided. And that's assuming that the judge does actually follow the normal rule of costs following the event. But I think that any reasonable person listening to the assertions that O'Doherty made in the videos about COVID-19, about Bowman Hospital, about the Director of Nursing, about the staff and so on and so forth. I think any reasonable person would recognise that that stuff is A, defamatory, and B, there is simply no defence. And she will find that that is the case when the hearing of the full action comes on. Hope you find this video useful. If you do, I would appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below. Thanks a lot.